Hi folks, Jack Spierko here with another edition of the Modern Deist Podcast. I uh, have Thursday off from my main work and I'm on vacation Friday through Friday and I decided that since I had this Thursday off I'd go ahead and put out episode 7 of the Modern Deist Podcast since 6 was about a year after 5 and I might as well, uh, if I keep this rolling maybe I'll get into a groove when I get back from vacation and put out, you know, maybe one of these a week. So even though I recorded this on Thursday the 21st, I'm probably going to put it out on Monday or Tuesday of what is next week for me and probably today for you. Anyway, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about something that I've written about on the Modern Deist blog at moderndeist.org. And that is the value of prayer. And is there any place for prayer in the life of a deist? But I actually want to take a larger view of this at first because one of my other podcasts, I, I heard myself say something about prayer and I'm like, oh, I should expand on that. So let's start out with, is there any value in prayer at all? Now, as a deist, again, like, so I don't tell anybody what to believe. I tell you what I believe and I defend my position and when people debate me, I expect intellectual arguments, not, oh, it's all in your head, it's all in your imagination. That's not an intellectual argument from an atheist, or Jesus is God because the Bible says so. That's also not an intellectual argument. But I'm really talking about prayer for anybody at this point, and including people that believe in revealed religions like Christianity that I don't believe in. Is there value in prayer? So from the, the, the way that most people approach that would be, if you pray for something, is it more likely that it will happen? Or if you pray for something, is it less li- you know, for something to not happen, is there any, any value that it will prevent it or make it less likely that it will happen? And, and I would submit to you that if that's the angle you're asking the question from, there is zero value in prayer. None. Uh, absolutely, positively, no value in prayer from an outcome standpoint. I'm going to get to an individual standpoint in a second, but if you pray for it to rain, and then tomorrow, even though the weatherman said it wasn't going to rain, it rains, that is not a miracle. That is weather, and weathermen are often, as we know, wrong. So if, if that's the way we would approach the question, zero value in prayer. However, that's not the question. The question is not, does prayer cause things to occur externally from the individual praying? I, that's not the question. The question is, is there any value in prayer? So I submit to you there's tremendous value in prayer, even when the person praying is deluding themselves in some ways as to the effectiveness of that prayer externally. So one of the common things in my childhood growing up Catholic was when we prayed at night, you would pray for other members of your family and your friends. God bless aunt so-and-so and and grandma and grandpa and brother and sister, etc. And our friends over here and God look over them and take care of them. Now, I don't think that that makes God whatever God is. And as a deist, I don't profess to know what God is. Like, go, oh, you know what? Because Jack prayed today for Brad to be watched over. I'm going to put a little extra time in watching over Brad. I, I, I don't believe that at all. However... One of the most valuable things a human being can have from a morality standpoint is empathy. And if a person ritualizes praying for the benefit of others, it can only serve to increase their empathy. Because they're focusing externally on someone else's needs and desires. And I think that is one example of a value of prayer. Can prayer actually affect anyone other than the person doing the praying is a question that is somewhat debatable. I do believe in an energetic universe, and I I don't believe God is going to intervene uh, if your friend feels sick because you prayed for them. I do believe it's possible, though I don't know how probable, that some level of that energy that you're sending out in some way may cause that person to feel better. I don't know if that's possible. There has been some experimentation that's that's at least come up with inklings of it might be plausible. But it, 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 for the, the purpose of today's episode, I would say that you put that out there on the you might win the lottery on a, t- a ticket that you step on and find stuck to your shoe, too. It could happen, but you don't bet your retirement on it. So I'm back to ex- internal focus of prayer. And I think that prayer is part of a ritual. So I think 
it also is a coping mechanism. So if you have someone in, that you love who is about to go through a very serious surgery and you hit your knees and you beg God to help, even though I don't think it will actually have any outcome on how well the surgeon does or how well your, your spouse does in that surgery, it may help you cope at a higher level, if that makes sense. So I think there's many instances that we can point to that say there is value in prayer. Let's take it back to a total internal focus, because we talked about praying for others so far. If a person says a prayer every day like, God, help me become a better man today. Help me be a better father. Help me be a better husband. Help me do that which is right by all of my brethren on the planet. Do I think God says, oh, Jack's asking me to do that, so I'll put fairy dust on his hair and make him a better man and father? No. But I do think it is very much an affirmational thing that if you're truly praying and asking for that because it's part of your belief system, it is likely that you will, in fact, become a better father, a better husband, a better man or reverse it as a woman and a mother, etc. Because you can't possibly be striving for something like that and, and, and mentally you know, self-programming yourself that it is the right thing for you to do and then not have it cause you to take some differences. If you're, if you're hitting your knees as a Christian every day praying to be a better father and something happens with one of your children, it is almost impossible that when you're going to act that you won't pause for a second and say hey wait a minute is this the right thing to be doing right now am i doing my best to be the best father i can under this circumstance so again i think that even praying for yourself in certain ways and methods and instances can benefit you and then ritual itself, we, we have solid scientific research with nothing to do with prayer that people that have ritual in their life, even if it's simply what time they wake up, they do a crossword puzzle on Sundays, they go bowling on Wednesday nights, they have a set ritual that they generally live their life by, seem to live longer, be healthier, and be happier people. Now, that's nothing against spontaneity because I don't do that shit, right? I have certain things in my life that I have to ritualize so that, you know, my main podcast goes out every day, so that my customers get taken care of. But I, I don't really live my life that way. Like, I don't have that type of schedule built in my life. But that doesn't mean that I'm wrong for it. But it, does, it also doesn't mean that maybe it's not beneficial to many people. So again, we're back to, I think, yes, prayer can be beneficial. Now we come to the key critical question for us as a deist. And I imagine many of you that listen to the show may not quite classify yourself as just a deist. You might classify yourself as a pandeist or a panantheist, right? Or a pantheist. Uh, many people that listen to and examine deist viewpoints actually don't consider themselves deists. They consider themselves believing simply in a higher power. Personally, I consider that deism. Okay, uh, I do not ascribe to solely the clockmaker version of the deist. Uh, philosophy that God just kind of went there's earth and walked away I, I I don't think that's how it works and I'm also not what you call a warm deist there are deists to believe that's kind of what it is but God occasionally still sticks a finger and it messes with stuff right I see it more I actually am far more somewhere along the lines of a panantheist or a, uh, a pantheist which I've discussed in an earlier episode you can go back and listen to uh, with a, a healthy bit of deist viewpoint built in so I imagine we have lots of people like that all over the spectrum but here's the commonality that we generally hold when it comes to something like prayer. God is not a genie that grants wishes, right? God is not an imaginary friend that I can talk to that will then do something because I have beseeched him. So even though someone hitting their knees every day and saying, God, make me a better man may be beneficial to them, it probably would not be beneficial to us because we don't believe it. It works for them because they believe it. But it works. And there's no doubt that it works. There's no doubt that people that truly pray to be better people tend to be better people. And I don't mean they're better people than deists or atheists, right? Or agnostics. I mean they're better people than they would be otherwise. 
in general, not 100%, because there's other means by which people at times find their way to improving their own moral state. What I'm saying is this is a method. So think of it like a diet. I'm a big believer in going low carb with a diet. I think it's a very effective diet. However, if you do a strictly calorically restricted diet and you don't go low carb and you stick to it, it also works. Right? So when I, when I say, you know, they are better for having prayed, it is one method by which one can improve oneself. But it works because they believe what they're saying, at least to some degree. So when you have someone like a deist who absolutely does not believe God make me a better person is going to cause God to do anything, will it still work? I don't know that it would work as effectively. The, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um... The placebo effect is nowhere near as great. If you give people a medication and they, you tell them it is a medication, it's really a sugar pill, a placebo, there's a certain percentage of them that will actually improve in the condition. There's a biochemical reason there, a, psychogeni- a, a psychosomatic, a body-mind, and psychosomatic is not what people like, faking being sick. Psychosomatic literally means the mind-body connection. There's a psychosomatic connection that occurs that that placebo effect will cause the body to heal itself, which it always had the ability to do, or to improve its position, and it always had that ability, but something in the mind-body connection pushes it further. Science sees this as a pain in the ass. They should see it as a door to keep looking at and keep knocking on and figure out how to turn that process up. But if I put you in a trial where you know there's a 50% chance you're not getting the medication, the placebo effect may happen, but it also will have, across, let's say, a 1,000 participants, a, a less marked effect. Any individual might be just as strong, but less marked. So the placebo effect, right, is, is not there. The concept that God's intervening. But the, the call to be a better man, for instance, is still there. Where a deist would probably be better off having in their ritual more of a straight-up affirmation. And a Christian affirmation might be something like, God is making me a better man every day. That's more of an affirmation than a prayer. Because a prayer would be more like, God make me a better man, or God please make me a better man. Where a deist may be better off saying, all that I know and all that I do is leading me to be a better man every day. That's just a straight up self-improvement technique. So, is there any crossover of prayer? And, and to me, there can be, and I'm not saying all these should do it, but to me, this is where it lies. It lies in internal dialogue and an understanding of what I call the deist relationship with the creator. And I've also written articles on this that you can find at moderndeist.org. But what I mean by that is, like, when I was, when I was involved in the Methodist church, and I was a teacher and leader in the Methodist church, or as I called it at the time, Catholic light, um... There was this concept of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And people actually believed that when they were talking to Jesus, that Jesus was like kind of hanging out with them. You can't see him, but he's right there, and he's actually talking back to them in some way. Now, I think that is, again, self-delusion. I think if you're doing the right things, so it's a harmless self-delusion, but I just don't think it works that way. But relationship actually means how two things interact with each other. And, and the, the Eastern philosophy that lives in me, whether I'm right or wrong, what I believe is very pantheistic or pantheistic or panantheistic, kind of hybrids of all of them, that the energy of God in the creation is in all things. It's in all energy. It's in all manager, uh, matter. It's in all beings. It's in all psyches. It's in all observation that God is truly one with everything. And thereby, everything that we interact with is interaction with the creator. And because it's as we perceive it, it is personal. In the words of Richard Bach, if there are 8 billion people in the world, there is not one world with 8 billion people. There are 8 billion worlds because each individual and how they perceive and view and interact with the world creates their own world. You and I do not live in the same world. Things that I would go to my death claiming to be valid, you would claim to be invalid and vice versa. Not because either of us are wrong. They are true for us. And that's a little bit deeper than we want to go today, but, but that's, that's what I mean by personal. That, that when, when you and I look at the same thing from relatively the same position, we see and interact and feel with it differently. 
So I think to me, deist prayer is best done as an internal dialogue in contemplation of the universe and our place in it. Questions like, why am I here and how did I get here? And what does this mean? And what should we do about this problem? When I say we, I'm not talking about me and God together. I'm talking about us as human beings. And then there are the questions of what should I do? And to have those conversations, this internal dialogue, and, and absolutely no, don't go get me wrong, there is no imaginary friend out there I'm talking to. It is, I am speaking with myself, but I'm also speaking with myself in observation of the creation itself. I'm watching ducks swim on a pond, or I'm watching a bird fly through the air, or I'm watching a tree in the distance be blown by a breeze, and allowing myself to, to mentally connect with that energy of that tree, so that when it moves, I actually feel the hairs move on my arm. Now, that is imagined. It is not some sort of energetic link that truly binds you in the tree at some sort of supernatural level. Though I believe the energy of all things is interconnected somewhere. And I believe what it is is your mind tying into the truth and giving you perceived feedback based on the underlying reality. And I believe in those moments that we can achieve a higher state of consciousness. Now, again, this isn't a yogi sitting in a lotus position who levitates, because that's bullshit. But it is a higher state of our own consciousness, an ability to improve how we interact with society. And I do believe it is a form of prayer. It's just a form of prayer that we're not taught, that has not been ritualized, and most individuals would not recognize as prayer. They would simply call it internal dialogue. But I submit to you, if you're a deist and you believe that the Christian who's on his knees praying to God is not actually talking to God, then whom is he speaking to? He is speaking to himself, which is why his prayer is effectual in some ways in the first place. Because if you speak to yourself and demand more of yourself or demand better of yourself over enough times, sooner or later you will begin to deliver on what you're asking for. We, though, cannot use a placebo effect because we don't believe at least I don't, and most of you listening to this podcast don't believe that. But we can still understand that the Creator is visible within the Creator's creation, and that we are part of it and we are energetically connected to it. And that if we are going to have big questions about our lives or desires to take actions to improve our own lives, that if we do so in observation of that connection, we can be more effective in the things that we're trying to do. And to me, that's what praying as a deist is really all about. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Remember, you can find all the podcasts and a lot more information at moderndeist.org. And I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can go to the site and send me feedback, or you can go to the YouTube channel. If you're watching or you know, basically listening on YouTube, I just throw up a, a single slide on YouTube and, and just so the videos can go there so more people can see them. And, and, and interact with me and, and give me your questions. I've got a lot of atheists telling me I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> that, but I don't have anybody asking me any questions. And including atheists. If you're an atheist and you want an intellectual discussion, I'm all about that. Uh, but acting like SpongeBob and, Bob and saying, oh, it's all imagination, I, I really don't have time to do full episodes for that kind of response. But I would love to hear your questions, your concerns, your ideas for future episodes. Again, the website, moderndeist.org.